running in this direction over here, they're going to have a chance to come back and get you again. If once I've eliminated you here, I step in and go here, then the defender has no longer an opportunity to tap you. So to start. I think mostly what happens is, especially after you come out of a left to right drag, so we go like this mostly and then try and hit across the line of the ball. So for starters, at least now, there's this kind of thing happening. So instead of it going out that way, you kind of got it to here, now you need to get it to there. So we've come halfway. And for starters, it's going to feel like an over-exaggeration. All right, so over-exaggerate the movement of the ball to get it going towards the opposite post. Good job. I know I did. Because it can't be just here, because then I'm trying to hit the ball from back here. And it can't be too far out in front because neither do you want to overstep and do this. The other thing I saw, this in here, so then you can't get your feet around far enough. So going too far this way isn't of much use either because then you're hitting from here. So you're just going to head it off in that direction. So the quality of this movement in here has to be <coughs> precise, directionally and weighted wise, and you're only allowed to touch it once. Alright, so it might mean that the ball is still on your stick, still counts as one touch. So out of here, bringing it in, stepping it into the space, using your feet as many steps as you want, not one big giant one. Then you can dead in the water. Get <coughs> down below, opposite corner. Let's make sure you get it right in here. Use the cones to line this up to get it to the opposite corner. Right? This is the most important aspect of this drill, to get it right. But it's about watching what others do as well and seeing what's not quite right and then what you need to do better as well. So you can do that in all sorts of things, all sorts of skills, all sorts of areas and whenever you're at training that's exactly what you should be looking at, is what everyone else is doing as well. Because the coach isn't just giving feedback to that one person, the feedback can go to everyone. So you take it all on board. All right. It's hard getting that lined up properly, isn't it? it? Seems like a really simple drill, but it takes a little bit to get this correctly lined up. And then you can hit straight through, and that's exactly where you're aiming for. This is the second post, professional side, opposite corner. Which means the ball still needs to be travelling. Second post, professional side is still wanting to hit the inside of the sideboard. <laughs> So from here, you're going to do right to left. Get the ball in, get your feet around in order to get that second post. The hard thing on this side, and the reason why the ball, you don't want the ball running off on either side is so that you can maximise the goal or the amount of goal that you have to aim at. Does that make sense? If you think about, you think about the back line and trying to shoot from the back line. So, I'm standing on the back line here and the goal's there and I'm standing here and trying to shoot. I've got this kind of little sliver of goal to shoot at from here. Does that make sense? So every time you move around in the circle means you have more goal. If I'm standing in the middle of the circle, I have the maximum amount of goal to shoot at. So from here, so on both sides through, if I drag across here, then bring the ball down in around here, and then shoot from here. I've got less to shoot at from here <coughs> than what I do from here. I literally have more goal. There's more area that the keeper has to cover. So from the back line, she can simply stand right next to the post, cover almost the whole thing. This is why we don't shoot from the back line. Not much to aim at. Goalie's easily got it covered. So when you're manoeuvring yourself in the circle and you have the opportunity to increase the amount of goal that you have to aim at, then that's what you should do. So for here and on this side, you're going to do a right to left, and then move the 
fall into the right line. So, <coughs> before I come from here, and then chuck it straight into there, I have to move all the way around here. From here, chucking the ball then into this space and almost in behind these cones. Now you can do this one of two ways. I'm an old school girl, so I have to go over and then my feet around. So after my drag, I go over the ball with my stick to chuck it into that space. Much easier and quicker to go under. So from here, chucking the ball from under. So less information, less time. So right to left drag, chucking the ball. See, I can't even do a slow motion. <laughs> too many times going over the top. But for most of you and in your age group, there's much more call for and much more um, open stick face in order for you to go under and complete your skills from under the ball. All right, so if I had a preference right now, I'd say go under. So if you've got a bit of both available to you, get under. Less information, much quicker and easier to get the skill executed. You can also lift much easier from there as well. All right, so the important bit is getting yourself around here, getting it set up right from here so that you're shooting from in behind the defender's stick. Feet right around. You're going So it's the quality of what you do after this drag that will get you a goal shot and that will get you a good goal shot to ensure that you actually score this goal. There's not many times when you get the opportunity to set it up properly. So when you get that opportunity, you have to take it and then you have to make sure that you score. So those opportunities don't come along very often. So one other point I want to make along with this is the, well, your feet and your footwork and the use of the, the spacing and the catching up with the ball. If I want to get a goal shot away and I want the ball to be there so I can hit it properly or hit it as well as I can, it's much easier for me to move my feet according to the ball than to try and put the ball somewhere according to my feet. Does that make sense? So if, I'm, if I want to stand in this position here and I've got to be able to put the ball there, so right on this dot, right here. It's hard. <laughs> it's hard. They have, there's so much that needs to be done in order to get it to the right place. But if the ball is in a spot and I get to move my feet to where the ball is, to where I need to be, then I can do it like that. So being able to move your feet according to where the ball is for goal scoring is absolutely critical. It takes much less time. It is much more precise. So what you've got to try and avoid then is the overstepping and trying to hit from here. So if you put the ball too far ahead, you overstep, it's one big thing, stuck in mud. But lots of little steps will enable you to put your feet exactly where you need them to go. Much easier, much quicker. Then if there's any refinements, you can use your wrist to do it and your stick face. <coughs> Lots of things available to you to, in order, uh, to enable you to get the best goal shot. Feet number one. So we're going to do a pass from here out to an big. You're going to head towards the blue, do a left to right drag towards the yellow. So once you drag, so if Murphy, if you want to come towards me, do a left to right drag. So I'm still here and hanging my stick there. The easy way to get around is to throw the ball out a little bit further, stick in right hand and be able to run around where I can't reach you. Which for me isn't too far, but some defenders actually have longer arms and longer sticks than what I have. So being able to get the ball out and around along the back line, handy skill to have. Really awkward at first to have your stick in your right hand full extension. So there's no point in having it here and trying to get more distance. 
because you may as well have two hands on your stick. So once you've done your left to right drag, get the ball out there to force yourself into throwing your stick out in your right hand. And that's actually a good way to do it. So once you're out here, is to actually push your stick through your hand. So just relax your right hand a little bit. Use your left to pull your stick, to push your stick through your right hand. All right, so Izzy, I know you do this a bit anyway, so you should be the gun at this. Don't think about it then. Ignore me, no, do not listen to me right now. Because you already do it and you do it quite well. So, just don't think about it if you've never thought about it before. I don't want to mess you up this weekend. All right, so once you've got around the defender, which is kind of at the back line, you need to get the ball back under control, get yourself back on the ball. So get your hands re-collected on your stick as normal. A little aerial over this line of um, cones, and then you'll make a pass into the circle. So in the circle, there's two players in there. So for starters, once this ball starts here, I want to see that the person in the middle is making some kind of lead to try and get this ball. So you've been overlooked and we've used the width instead, so you have to go somewhere else. So head in towards here. As if you're going to be able to get a pass from this person at some point. They've decided to carry further along the back line because you're in here. And the goalkeeper, I'm now too close to the goalkeeper, so she'll smother anything that comes here. Then you need to make a lead back and away from the keeper. We're going to have another one coming from here that will get the second post. So if you learn nothing this weekend, is that how important the second post is? <laughs> that every time someone is shooting, that someone else is widening the goal by being down, alert, brave and ready on the second post. You're shooting to that side. You're shooting to the second post. So, yes, is the answer. You're actually trying to score, but the other person will be there helping you to do that. So there'll be a little bit of a swing in the middle there. So this person will come from here. So one to the lead out here, this person will actually move into this position here and get themselves ready in order to score. All right? So there's no point being literally on the second post because the person will just score themselves. <coughs> and you've only widened the goal by this much. If you're here off and away a little bit, You've still got this available to you, in fact even more because you're down the left. Then all that has to happen is this, plus anything that comes here. So from here to here, got covered. Nothing gets through. <laughs> Alright, so there is a crossover here, you've got to be alert. you got to know that when someone's running along the back line to get off, the back line and away so that they've got to pass back into the circle. Oh, I think we start.
actually happen. We're not just trying to run through repetition. We're actually trying to just get this right. Okay, here we go. Especially in this circle, we have to have tight control on your aerial. So you've got to go for that little bit of height, not the distance. In here, the intensity of your movement needs to be much higher. Um, Kizzy, why don't you come and mark me here? You have to pretend every time that someone is after you. Because in the circle, someone will be after you. This, like literally holding sticks, shirts, and pushing from behind. So a little movement here is not going to be enough because you'll be on the ground and not much help to your teammates. So that's the preparation here. It's not so that you can score nice goals for your state team, it's so that you can play for Australia. So, the movement in here needs to be, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Nah, did you get it? Yeah, 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 Jess. Nah, yeah. Push them back on his face. Yes, here I am now. Three different movements to get one ball. 50 different movements to get the goal. One touch. One little knock, that's it. 50 sprints, 50 movements, different manipulations of the defender in order to get one goal shot. Which is why you need to be able to put it in the net from one touch. But also, if you can't do this as a striker, you can't present, have an energy, do short little sharp movements in the circle, you will never get the ball. So the one touch, the one movement that's required for the goal, so the movement in here has to be sharp. It has to show everyone in the stadium that you want this ball and exactly where you want it. Because I'm going to be the one that scores. Give me the ball because I will score. That is your attitude from now on in. When you're doing a left to right drag, you're practicing at training. No one ever misses it out this far side. So if you're trying to get a really big drag, we're working within this zone here so that we don't lose it. But the zone becomes smaller and smaller to ensure that we don't. We're frightened of losing it out this side. And so you never see that even at training. You should be practicing to get your drags as big and as sharp as you can. Which means at times you'll lose it out this side because it's too much. Because you're trying to find the middle ground or where and what works for you. Here's a perfect excuse to chuck it out there and get your stick out there. So if you don't see any going over the back line, then no one's pushing it as far as they can. No one's stretching it to see how far they can actually take this skill, which is quite a long way. So don't be afraid to lose the ball at training. Uh -huh. <laughs> take it to an extreme, then sometimes that's going to happen. So get out. Cute this stuff through here. The goal shot won't happen if you don't manipulate the defender. If you allow them to just stand there in front of you, you won't get as many opportunities as you will if you manipulate the defender, move them in and out, keep making them look around for you, jump in front at the right time and prepare to knock the ball in the net as soon as it's available. One time shot. So you're going to get two balls, one.